today on 15 on 50. The negotiations between Aruba and Sitco Petroleum have taken a positive turn. Plus, this Canadian startup is introducing new ways to store sustainable energy. And as part of Thanksgiving traditions, Macy's held its annual Thanksgiving Day Parade. Joining us on another edition of 15 on 15 right here on Channel 15 ATV. First off, I would like to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Now let's get started with today's local news topics. Earlier today, Aruba received some good news from Houston. After meeting with the Minister of Economics, Mike DeMesa, the American refinery Sitco announced they are ready to continue with the next phase of the negotiations to reopen Aruba's refinery. In September of this year, the American Petroleum Company, which is Sitco, signed a memorandum of understanding with the Aruban government. This contract stated that the decision to continue with the transaction needed to be made by the 30th of November, and a heads of agreement needed to be signed by the 31st of December. After a lengthy legal, economic, and technical investigation of Aruba's idled refinery, the American Petroleum Company, Sitco, concluded that the benefits of reopening the former Valero refinery were substantial. Therefore, they have decided to continue with the following phase of the negotiation. The Minister of Economics, Mike DeMesa, states that he believes these following months ahead are very crucial, but he believes it will also have a positive outcome for the island's economic growth. We'll be sure to keep you updated on all the developments of this negotiation. In other news, an Aruban was recently detained in Cali, Colombia in suspicions of an international drug trafficking operation. He is currently under supervision of the Colombian police and is awaiting to be extradited to the United States to face criminal charges. On Monday evening, an Aruban native named Anthony Amd was detained on suspicions of cocaine smuggling into the U.S. During a routine check at a hotel in Cali, Colombia, Anthony was immediately questioned due to his presence on Interpol's most wanted list. This subject has been detained in the past due to fraud charges and is suspected to be part of a drug export business from Aruba into Port Everglades, Florida. Anthony is currently in Cali awaiting to be extradited to the U.S. to be tried in a court of law. Moving forward, for the past 12 years, the Aruban immigration laws required a visa from all Colombian visitors upon arrival. During a recent conference in Colombia, the CEO of the Aruba Tourism Authority announced the official elimination of the tourist visa as of December 3rd. Over the last decade, the Colombian economy and government has become stable and the citizens have received more spending power. Therefore, these visitors have become an essential part of the island's Latin tourism. This positive change in Colombia's economy is seen in the increased international investors and the increase of affluent tourists from the region. Over the past couple of years, Aruba has improved its relationship with the Colombian community by introducing more flight options and having very attractive tourism campaigns in the country's larger cities. According to visitor statistics, in 2014, the island welcomed 23,836 Colombian tourists, which is a 22% increase compared to the year before. Therefore, the Aruba Tourism Authority would like to remove all obstacles between the two countries. With the elimination of the visa, it is expected that Aruba will receive a 50% increase of Colombian visitors within the next following year. On another note, today the multifunctional building in Nord will be officially opening its doors to the public. This structure was built to be 100% self-sustainable. And besides operating fully on solar, wind and water energy, this will be the first center on the island with an electric car charging station. In virtually every parking lot in the Netherlands, you will most probably see an electric car charging station. But of course, the fleet of electric vehicles in the Netherlands is the second largest in the world after Norway. As of September, the Netherlands has over 63,000 plug-in electrical vehicles. Although Aruba is nowhere near that number of electric cars, it is slowly growing. Therefore, the activated power company gave a presentation on the experience of owning an electric car and the benefits it can have for both your pocket and the environment. Along with their presentation, this organization introduced an electric vehicle charging station at the completely eco-friendly MFA North building. With the unveil of this charging station, the activated power company is seeing a bright future for electric cars on the island. We'll be back with more 15 on 15 after a word from one of our sponsors. 
we come back, Aruba introduces underwater energy storage. Thank you for staying with us. Staying on the topic of green energy, the island is constantly finding new ways to create energy in a greener and cleaner way. In 2013, Web Aruba signed with a Canadian startup that has launched the world's first underwater compressed air energy storage solution. A range of energy storage options is becoming increasingly available to respond to growing share of renewable methods. Hydroster is geared towards storing electricity during off-peak hours and then tapping into it as demand grows. This system, which is capable of holding enough energy for 300 homes, will be installed off the coast of Vader Piet. So, how does it work? This technology of underwater balloons uses the same material used to raise sunken ships from ocean floors. It acts much like an underwater air battery, except instead of storing energy in the form of a chemical reaction, it uses compressed air. When power is needed, a web worker opens a valve on shore and the air rushes up to spin a turbine. Although this technology is currently only in Toronto, there is a hydroster on its way to Aruba. This system is ideal for the island since it already has technology to desalinate the water. The hydroster representative states that they have installed the fish habitats along with its systems to protect the nation's marine wildlife. On another note, the National Archaeological Museum of Aruba, along with Roma Trading, recently presented the book El Mar Cimarron by anthropologist Weidler Guerra Curvelo. In this book, the author shares his knowledge of the sea, navigation, and fishing amongst the Wayus, an American Indian ethnic group of the Guajira Peninsula in northern Colombia and northwest Venezuela. According to the author, the book is an academic cooperation between Aruba and Colombia. The author writes about how the Wayu fishermen interact with the sea and the living creatures that live in it, such as the fish, turtles, plants, and birds but also in other creatures of the coastal environment, as wind, hills, stars, and other non-human agents, as well as their relationships with the market and the principles of territorial control that apply in the marine space. The author concludes that in its historical interaction with the sea, Wayu used cognitive patterns that allowed them to categorize, find, and organize the relationships between humans and non-humans. These help them to undertake a vast task of nominating the vast plethora aquatic universe of beings and landscapes. This notion of ancient or bighorn sea associated with an untamed beast is a powerful metaphor for understanding how why you built their relationship with the sea. The book and the book presentation on this special evening were sponsored by Romar Trading. On another note, Aruba's aviation fanatics got a special treat from one sexy jet. The Sexy Jet is a Gulfstream GV with a paint job like no other. In this time-lapse video, the Duncan Aviation Services proves that watching paint dry is anything but dull. This video showcases one of the most complex and costly paint scheme designs and applications Aruba has ever seen. Unique in both layout and material, the design features stripes and hexagonal patterns that appear to change color. This company has done paint jobs for heads of state that wanted to stand out, but according to these experts, this job is above all others. Not surprising, these owners are eager for the aircraft to be noticed. They make beach tennis gear under the brand name Sexy Beach Tennis. Therefore, their visit to Aruba for the Aruba International Beach Tennis Tournament. The owners hope to expand their brand into other lifestyle products, including branded aircraft charters. That is indeed one sexy jet. Don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with more English news right after a quick commercial break. After the break, this is the 89th Annual Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. Thank you for staying tuned to 15 on 15. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. For Americans on the island, this is a day to give thanks for everything you are grateful for in the past year. Along with this holiday tradition come the big football games, family meals, and of course, the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. Join us for the Great American Thanksgiving Day Tradition. The streets of New York City are lined with millions of spectators, and holiday cheer is in the air. A celebration filled with television and music's biggest stars, world-famous balloons, incredible marching bands, 
phenomenal floats, and Broadway's best. It's all coming your way, live on NBC. Welcome to the 89th Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. All the best to you and your families on this special holiday celebration. Thank you so much for watching. These were your local news updates and trending Aruba topics. Don't forget to like our 15 on 15 Facebook and Instagram page for all of your latest news updates. And be sure to also tune back in tomorrow night at 7.15 p.m. for more 15 on 15 right here on Channel 15 ATV. See you then.